Hi, I'm Anthony Marinelli. Today I'd like to show you how to recreate the Billie Jean chord stack. It's the sound on Billie Jean that goes ooh, 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 and it consists of four completely different sounds that all play at the same time. Sound one is stringy, sound two is brassy, sound three is voice-like, and sound four is actually Michael singing oohs in two-part harmony. Back in the early 1980s, it was unheard of to use this many tracks of tape to record just one musical part. So Billie Jean may appear musically simple, but it's sonically very rich. The original sounds were programmed on a Yamaha CS80, so I'll show you how to make these sounds on that instrument. I'm also going to show you how to make sound one, the stringy sound, on a more familiar Prophet 5. If you haven't seen my video about how to make the bass sound in Billie Jean, it's called MJ's Billie Jean Bass, It's Four Instruments. This bass sound also exists on multiple tracks. Literally four different instruments make up the bass sound. It's deep, just like the chord stack. I'll be using that bass track to play the chord stack against it in this video. So now let's take a deep dive together and dive into these patches. Sitting in front of the magnificent CS80, this is one of my favorite all-time synths because of its ability to be expressive, like basically no other synthesizer. It has a special keyboard and it, it receives information from your velocity, how hard you hit the keys, and also after you hit the keys, how much you press into them. So when you're playing this sound, you have to be very careful as to how you articulate it. And that's one of the things that makes it sound kind of beautiful in Billie Jean. It's a very simple sound, not that complicated, but it's a little bit different on every attack, unlike a lot of other synthesizers. So I'm going to break down how the sound was made. The CS80 also has two basic signal paths because it has two oscillators. You can play a lot of notes on it, but each oscillator you can make a separate sound, a different sound. So the first oscillator is a pulse wave with some pulse width modulation. So let me focus on that sound. No pulse width mod. Pulse width mod. And it gives it what you think is vibrato, but it's just the waveform changing over time. And then there's a little bit of filter, like the filters open a little bit, and then it's being modulated a little bit. And that's basically it. Make sure the release time is set right, that's the ring out. If I don't have any, it's very short. And now to the other part of the sound. I move the slider down and you'll solo just the other oscillator, because I told you there's two oscillators. This oscillator is a sawtooth waveform, so there's no pulse width modulation, there's nothing like that. It's a very flat sound, which you heard. The filter's open. That's not open. And there's a little bit of modulation of the filter by the envelope generator. I have a slow attack time, kind of a medium decay time, and again, release time so that it rings. That's part two. And when you put them together, magic happens. So what I'd also like to do is show you how to make this sound on the Prophet 5 and we'll, we'll match them and I think you can get pretty close because that instrument has two oscillators just like the CS80. So I've matched the Prophet sound to the original CS80 because I'd like to show you how to make the sound on another instrument. If I didn't have a CS80 on a session I'm going to make the sound however I have to make it on any synthesizer. So I'd like to show you the settings on the Prophet. Oscillator 1, you can see, is a pulse wave. Oscillator 2, a sawtooth wave. Over here, we see the sawtooth wave, and we see 
the pulse wave. And we can balance between the two with this balance knob. So on the Prophet 5, you can see the pulse wave and the sawtooth wave on the second oscillator, and we balance them a little bit differently. There's just a knob for each one. So I can turn the volume up and have either oscillator in solo or together. So starting with the first sound, which is the pulse with modulation part, Now I'll move over to the sawtooth waveform, which is on oscillator 2, and you can see I can move the volume of oscillator 2 up full. And this is going to sound very similar to the second part of the CS80. And when I put the two together, I just turn the volume knob. You get a very similar. The only difference that I notice is the irregular the irregularities in the CS80 can't really be matched on the Prophet 5 because the Prophet doesn't have the expression ability. This keyboard is just going to be a gate, an on-off switch, and the release times are going to be very consistent on the Prophet 5. Whereas on the CS80, depending on how you play it, every note's a little different, and I think it makes it sound a little bit more realistic, like for real strings playing. So when I go over to the Prophet, you can see on the Prophet, I only have one filter on the Prophet, and both waveforms go in there. So that's going to be a little bit different because you don't have two basically uh, separate signal paths, which is called multi-tambral. You could probably do it that way um, on the Jupiter 8 or on a Synthex because those have multiple signal paths. But I'm doing it on the Prophet 5 because it's a lot, a lot more common to find a Prophet 5. And if you can do it on a Prophet 5 or a Juno, you could for sure do it on a Jupiter 8 or a Synthex. So this gives you like the worst case scenario and, and, and it really helps you understand the, the signal path and, and how to program it. So you're running it into one filter and I have the filter cutoff frequency set to about 50%, no resonance, and about 50% on the envelope amount. You can look at the um, envelope generators themselves. I don't have much attack in the filter. The decay time is about mid-range a little bit of sustain, a little bit of release time, and then the envelope generator in the VCA has a little bit slower attack time, and that kind of matches the CS80, about the same mid-range decay time, full sustain, and release time. And just make sure on the profit that you have the release button pushed down, because if you don't, you won't get any release time. So when I push the release button, you get the release time. And the last and most important thing is on the Prophet 5 that you have the wheel up because if you don't have the wheel up you won't get any pulse width modulation. Wheel down, wheel up. That's what gives you the chorusy and richness that the sound needs. The way the arrangements worked on Thriller there was a lot of layering. So the very first sound that I played the chord stabs on, that sound was doubled. This sound also comes in and it's like another similar type of sound. It's not doubled, so there aren't two of these that go down. There's only one of these that go down. So when I say doubled, the first sound actually had two tracks of that sound. This sound, there's only one track of this sound. And it sounds like this. much shorter, more articulate, and rounder, tons of chorusing. I have the CS80 chorus and tremolo, which is what allows this instrument to come out in stereo. There's two signal paths, like we discussed earlier, two oscillators, 
an upper and a lower. They call it one and two, and I can control that with the mix control. So the first oscillator has a sawtooth wave and a pulse wave playing, and I'm going through the filter. There's a little bit of initial cutoff frequency, and then I have envelope generator modulating the low pass filter, uh, kind of a slow attack time, the maximum decay time, about halfway on the release, into the VCA, and then I have kind of a slow attack time as well, a lot of decay, almost maximum sustain, and then a mid-range amount of release, and you can hear that. No release. So it's really important to get the release right, especially on a CS80. And then we go to the lower sound, which is the other oscillator, oscillator 2. Same thing. Pulse wave, sawtooth wave, pulse width modulation that's at about a medium rate with the LFO that's built in. A little bit of noise. I forgot to tell you there was noise on the first oscillator, so a little bit of white noise that's mixed into the sound before the filter and then we go into the filter initial cutoff frequency is open a little bit less than half modulating the filter with an a time that's about mid mid range a long decay like the maximum the cs80 can offer release time i'll solo that oscillator so you can hear the release time no release release. So it softens the sound into the VCA, very similar settings with, with a little bit less decay time. So like a mid-range amount of attack time, a little bit less decay time than, than maximum, which is the amount that's in the filter, and then about a mid-range amount of release time. So let's listen to the sound separately and you can hear them a little more clearly that way. So that's oscillator one. Oscillator two. Put them together. And what does this sound do? Well, I think it, it adds sort of this chorusy richness and fullness. Because when you think about the complexity of the arrangements of a that that, that are true for most songs on Thriller. There's a lot of complexity to the arrangements, and what I mean is that sounds will just sort of come in sometimes only in one place to highlight or to help a section build so that it isn't just the same all the time. So what happens in, in this chord stab part is you've got the two clear sounds that we previously put down doubled, then this sound just comes in and, and sort of fills it out. And then Michael comes in and sings harmony, vocalizes harmony that plays these same chord stab rhythms. And then I'm going to show you another part on the CS80 that's just a sound very similar to what Michael's singing. And that doubles what Michael's singing. So you've got this very full, you know, section like orchestration of sounds that are hitting these chord stabs. <laughs> Now I'd like to show you the third sound that plays along with the chord stabs. This sound is just basically a sine wave, two sine waves that sort of beat against each other slightly. So remember there's two oscillators on the CS80, one and two. So if I go to oscillator one, I don't have anything going on in the filter. It's just in the VCA and it's only a sine wave. So the CS80 allows you to just patch a sine wave directly into the VCA. So there's like a little bit of slow attack, medium amount of decay time, full release time, and a nice amount of, of uh, release so that you get a little ring as opposed to, let's set it. You can see I'm always particular about my release times because it's how you play and how you perform and how you sort of feel the groove. So it's really important to get the release times feeling right. And then on the other side, the other oscillator, again, it's a sine wave going into the VCA. There's nothing going on in the filter. So no resonance, you know, no pulse width modulation or anything because it's just a sine wave in the VCA. And it looks pretty much the same as the first oscillator. You can see the attack times are about the same. 
kind of slow, medium range decay, full sustain more or less, and then the release time is about the same, and then full volume basically. And then what gives it the tone is that the second oscillator is up an octave. So it's primarily the first oscillator. If I just let you hear oscillator two by itself, you hear it's way up there, but that's not the sound. We just need a little bit of it. So oscillator one with a little bit of oscillator two. I'll bring more in. You hear it? Here's without it. Here's with it. So just a little bit of that upper harmonic, that octave above the fundamental, is what gives it a little bit more brightness. And it's kind of like, you know, organ thinking, because that's what organists used to do to make harmonics. They didn't have filters per se. So we would just make sounds with like mixes of high harmonics. And that's what all the draw bars on an organ do. And then the last feature of this sound is just a little bit of tremolo. And you do that on the CS80 by basically engaging the ring modulator, which is just, base, you know, ring modulator is really a VCA with, with like a um, sine wave modulation, which is tremolo when it's going really slow. And you can hear that. If I were to go faster, it starts to ring modulate and go crazy. So there we go. And then amount. So there's none. So just a nice moderate amount. Again, if I had the speed fast and a lot of modulation. We're into craziness. Just setting a ring modulator with a slow speed sine wave and a little bit of modulation. Gives you a gentle tremolo. And that's all it is. You bring in both oscillators just with the right balance with a high octave above the low octave and it's primarily the low octave and you have this sound that essentially doubles Michael. An interesting feature of this sound is that it doesn't only play in the A section and the B section. Here's the B section. It also plays in the bridge, unlike the other chord steps. And it only plays at the second half of the bridge, and it only plays in the first part of the second half of the bridge. Only this. And then it goes to the five chord. But it doesn't play that chord. So you're only getting this. Those are the primary elements in the chord parts of Billie Jean. So now, sound four. Sound four is actually Michael singing. He sings two out of the three notes that are in the chords played on the synths. I believe this fourth sound provides the secret sauce that is a perfect complement to the slight unpredictable nature of the CS80's attack and decay. All four sounds combine in a very organic way to make up the iconic chord stack that we hear in the original recording. I was told by Stephen Ray, my co-host for Stories in the Room, that Michael would beatbox Billie Jean in his ear before the recording of the song. Could you imagine that? So it doesn't surprise me that Michael would want to keep a vocal quality in the final version of his song. It doubles sound three, which is the previous sound I just showed you, sound three, CS80 ooze, which has a very similar tone as Michael's voice here. To wrap up, check out our video called MJ's Billie Jean Bass, It's Four Instruments. See the link in the description. It will take you right there to check out that video. So thank you all very much for subscribing and following us on social media. We read all the comments and it energizes us to pass along more of this info. Please use it and let us know any ideas that you'd like to share. We're all students and we all want to play better music and inspire more people. So until next time, 